What's first? Is that in uh, D flat? Or?
say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Has he been good, church? Amen. Is he worthy, church? Is he worthy? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys can be seated. We say it is so good to see you in the house of God this Wednesday evening. I'm glad you are here. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about what God's doing, what he's already done, and what he's going to continue to do. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's see here. I don't have my notes up here, and Lord knows if I don't have notes, I'm a scatterbrain, so I'm going to try to get this. They have it on the screen for me. Anybody have a prayer request this evening? Yes, sir, Brother Dale. this evening. Amen. Amen. Remember Pastor Ayers. Amen. As he continues to recovery, recover from his surgery. He's doing good. He was going to try to be here tonight, but he's not. But he's doing good. He's doing much better. Um, so remember him. Keep remembering him. Amen. Remember all the lost, all the hurt, all the sick. So many. Amen. Our country. Lord, help our country, our leaders, our churches. Amen. So many needs tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Willie if he will lead us in prayer. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we just thank you so much for all that you're doing, Lord. Father, we thank you for each and every person here, Lord, that's represented. Father, we thank you for each and every one listening by live stream. And Father, I'm asking that you'll remember each and every request that was spoken, Lord, each and every hand that was raised. Father, you know the needs before we even ask. And Father, I'm asking that you'll meet these needs in the mighty name of Jesus. I know that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to meet these needs in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way in this service tonight, Lord. Father, let your will be done, not our own. In Jesus' name, amen. And our ushers are coming at this time to give you an opportunity to give. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for all that you do, all the time. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this offering, Father. Lord, bless this part of worship, God. You've been so, so good to us, Lord. Help us to be faithful unto you. It is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. My calling, Father, pray the beginning and the end. I call him a constant companion.
and give it up for our worship team. Praise God. Praise God for them, right? I mean, we got some talent up here, don't we? More talent than I got. <laughs> I think Willie Bird's got more talent in his left pinky when it comes to instruments than all of us got put together. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We got a good worship team. Amen. Real quick, I know I heard that Phyllis and Dale, brother, Phyllis, brother Dale and sister Phyllis, get it out here in a second, they celebrated 42 years of marriage yesterday. 42 years. My goodness, 42 years. Ain't that awesome? So congratulations, you guys. Congratulations. That's a huge milestone. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to be in 1 Samuel 16. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about the anointing tonight. Amen. How many of you know that we need the anointing? We've got to have the anointing. In fact, we're doing ourselves a disservice if we're not chasing after the anointing, if we don't have the anointing on our life. Amen. That is part of the promise from God is for us to be anointed, right? For Him to give us the Holy Spirit so that we can be effective in this world. So we're going to talk about it a little tonight. First Samuel, starting with verse 17 in chapter 16. It says, So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a mighty man of valor, a warrior, one prudent in speech, and a handsome man. And the Lord is with him. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you will add your blessings to this word, Lord. Anoint me, Father. Give me the words to say, nothing more, nothing less. God, help us to hear your word tonight. And at the end of the day, all the glory goes unto you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The anointing, you folks, I want to talk about the anointing for a little bit. Because I feel like, let me start off by saying this. I feel like we have kind of, as a church, as a body of believers, we have mishandled the anointing. I believe that it has fallen into some hands of people who have mistreated it, misused it, amen, and we are not taking it and using it like God intended us to. I think of this, I, I, I'll tell you my own uh, little story here. I don't even like, everybody knows what Jordan tennis shoes are, right? Everybody knows how expensive Jordan tennis shoes are, right? Okay, my mama bought me a pair of Jordan tennis shoes one time. I was, I, I can't remember how old I was. I think I was still in school. But they were nice. They were the nice. They were the Jordan 11s, white. They had emerald on them. I mean, they were nice. They, they, they were nice. I never, I don't think I ever wore them because after I bought them, I was like, I don't even like them. I don't even like how the way they look. So I kept them for a few months, and I gave them to my baby brother. Now, Kyle, Kyle don't care. He'll wear anything. He will absolutely put on any tennis shoe. It don't matter if they're ugly or not. He will wear those tennis shoes. And those pair of tennis shoes that I gave him, I didn't really care about them that much when I gave it to him. But when I saw him wearing them, and the first time I saw him wearing them with a crease in them or a little bit of dirt on them, it made me upset. It offended me a little bit. It upset me because I had given Kyle something that mattered to me, and they didn't matter as much to him. He was appreciative of it. He enjoyed those tennis shoes. He wore those tennis shoes, but he didn't give those tennis shoes the respect that I thought he should be giving them. And doesn't that sound like the church, right? God has poured out the anointing on the church for today's time for us to be effective in this world, and we don't give it the respect that it needs. We take the anointing and we twist the anointing and, 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 and listen. We got this idea in our head that we can just fake it until we make it. And that might work for a little bit, but that is absolutely not good. It is not a good mindset to have. I can fa How many of you know we can fake it? People can fake the anointing. People can get up here. They can get in front of a crowd. They can get in the altars. They can get in a prayer group, and they can fake the anointing. We got some good impersonators in the church today. And they're absolutely running the anointing into the ground. In fact, they're scaring people away from the anointing. Because when they see somebody that's mistreating the anointing and misusing the anointing, it turns them off from the anointing. It makes us... Some, some 
Some misuse the anointing to a certain degree so badly and so wrongfully that people talk, start to judge. Amen. Start to judge us. The Pentecostal church is known to be an anointed church, right? We allow the Holy Spirit to move. We're an anointed people. My goodness, but when we see somebody acting like they're anointed on Sunday morning, but then on their jobs or outside of church, amen, they're supposed to be anointed, and they're this great figure of God. They're this and they're that, amen, but you can't tell what they are outside of these four walls. Why would I want to be anointed? If that's what being anointed is all about, you're telling me that the anointing changes people. It obviously hasn't changed you, so it's not that important. Why do I need it? We're misusing the anointing. We're mistreating the anointing. Now more than ever, we need the anointing. And too many times we have an idea of what the anointing looks like. You're not an anointed preacher unless you're laying people out on the altar every service. You're not an anointed preacher unless you're up here shouting, screaming, hooping, and hollering the whole time. The church isn't anointed if you don't have revivals all the time and see people running up and down the aisles and out the doors. But I believe that the anointing is so much more complex than that. I've told you before, I love the shouting. I love the getting loud and having church. I love that more than anything. But I believe that the anoint, the anointing is so much more deeper than that. See, the anointing can fe- affect the way I think. It can affect the way I act, the way I walk. My every day-to-day life, the anointing is supposed to have an effect over all of those things. right? It can make me humble. When I don't have the strength to be humble. It can give me discipline when I don't have the discipline to have, when I'm not strong enough. Right? The anointing is so much more complex than how we treat it. So if there's one thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some keys to carrying the anointing. And I want you to understand that if there's one thing, if there's one major key tonight, we're going to talk about a few of them. But all of them go back to our submission to the Father. Not to nobody else, not to the local church, not to the denomination, not to any man, not to any woman, but our submission to the Father. Our anointing relies on the submission to the Father. Our anointing is activated by our submission to the Father. So we have to align ourselves with God. Romans 8 and 7, it says, Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Our mindset decides what we align ourselves with. If our mind is not in it, odds are our heart won't be in it. We have to win the battleground, we have to win the war in our mind before we fight the next battle, right? If we are losing the battle in our mind, Amen. We're, we, the devil has us right where he wants us. Because that's how it starts, right? That's how it starts. Y'all have heard this. Uh, uh, oh, the word left me. But y'all have heard this before, right? You can't control a bird from flying over your head and laying an egg, but you can keep that egg from hatching. How true is that? Amen. When a thought comes across your mind, when a temptation or an evil thought comes across your mind, you don't have to act on it. You still can have power over that thing and get it out of your mind. You have to have power to win the battle in your mind. Because what our mind lines itself up with, the rest of us will line, the, the, the rest of our being will line itself up with. We have to get our mind under the blood of Jesus to stay aligned with him. The reason that David qualified for the anointing, even at an early age, is because he submitted to authority. David was a young man. No doubt he would rather be in the front lines of the battle. He wondered why he couldn't go out and fight. But he submitted to his father and instead stood guard for hours upon hours over the sheep in the pasture. Amen. He was aligned with authority. And now, more than ever, we have to be aligned with God. We have to be aligned with this word. I'm not going to try to talk too much about the news and what's going on today, but we're seeing it and we're aware of it, right? We've got all this confusion in the world. We've got people that don't know what they are. We've got people that don't know what they believe in. We've got people who are lost. They're ignorant and they are confused and they have lost their way. If we can align ourselves with this word, if we can get our mind on the things 
of God and win the battles in our minds, amen, we will have healthier hearts. We will have a healthier spiritual life. It all starts with the mind. No matter what, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. No matter what, I'm going to stand up for this word. Right? Submitting to authority will ultimately lead you right into God's will for your life. See, we can't pick and choose what we want to have aligned with God and what we don't. You can have your finances in alignment with God, but if you don't have your relationships in alignment with God, you can have certain aspects of your life in alignment with God, but if you're not totally, completely surrendered unto Him, somewhere the enemy is going to creep in and take little by little until he has control over it all. Wherever there is submission, wherever we say, God, not my will be done, but yours, your be done, your will be done in my life, your will be done in my marriage, your will be done in my finances, your will be done in my household, your will be done in my job, your will be done in my life. Wherever we submit that over to God, wherever we say, God, it is your will, not mine, then he can release the anointing. You know why? Because God never calls us to a place he won't give us and supply to us what we need. I mean, it might be hard. It might be difficult. We might be in a place or in a season of our life where we feel like God's not even there. Amen. Let me tell you, he is absolutely 110% there. You get on your knees. You get on your face. You cry out to, cry out to God. Seek his face. Amen. He will give you the strength. He will give you the courage and the boldness. He will provide for you, amen, in this season of your life. David set his mind on the things of God. He knew what we wanted. Do we know what we want? I think we do. I think most of us here probably do know what we want. But the problem is, is that some of us, we get what we want, and we quit the pursuit we're so set on chasing the gift and not the giver that when we get the gift, we say, forget the giver. I don't need you more. I've made it. I can do it without you. How dangerous is that? We need the giver when we have the gift. We need the giver on the mountaintops and the giver in the mountain lows. We need the giver every single day of our life. But we treat him like he's not important, amen, because we feel like we're strong enough and we feel like we've made it and we feel like we can do it. So we push him to the side. And you're more vulnerable in that moment than you ever were in your life. It is only when you get in alignment with the head that the anointing can be released. Psalm 33 describes, says, uh, describing Aaron that it was poured from his head. That oil poured down from his head through his beard, down even to his feet and the bottom of his garment. When we get our head under the flow, when we get our head right, when we get our mental right, amen, God can release an anointing on our whole body, amen, we just won't think right, amen, we'll love right, we will just won't love right, we'll talk right, we'll walk right, amen, when we get our head in the flow, amen, that's when we can be in alignment with God, we have to be in alignment with God, we have to, we have to know, we, this is another issue that we have. This is another problem that we have. We don't even know what we believe in, so how can we align to what we don't know? Uh, do, we, do, we, do, we, do we read our Bibles anymore? Do we study? Do we have devotion to God? Because if you don't know what you're reading, if you don't know what you're believing in, if you don't know what the preacher's talking about or the worship team's singing about, how do you know how you're in alignment with it? We're not, we, we, don't, we don't have the, we, we can't even muster up the strength to get up and read our Bible. And then we wonder why we're so weak. We wonder why we keep getting kneecapped when we walk out the house. We're weak. We're weak. Alignment releases the anointing. We got to align ourselves with God. Number two, worship releases the anointing. Psalms 28 and 7 says that the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am 
helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. With my song, I will praise him. I said this Sunday morning, we can praise God before the battle is even over, right? We can praise Him knowing that the battle is His. We can praise Him. Listen, there is certain certain perks that we get with being children of God. I had a professor correct me one time, and and, and brother Brother Harry and Sister Janice will know exactly what I'm talking about. I had a professor correct me one time. I was up late writing a paper, fast as I could, wasn't even thinking about it. It was for ministry. And we were talking, I can't even remember what we were talking. I think we were talking about a, a discipleship or something. And I, we were talking about lost, the lost. And I referred to the lost as children of God. Well, that's not exactly true. Even though we are created by God, not all of us are children of God. So some of us have certain benefits by being children of God than others. If you're saved, you have benefits. If you're not saved, there's just certain benefits that you don't have. Right? So I can trust in God knowing that the battle is His. I have the victory. I'm fighting from victory. Right? I can praise Him anyways. Too many times. Too, way too many times. We walk in here already defeated. Or we go to our prayer closet already defeated. Or we listen to worship music already defeated. And I know how it feels to have a bad day. I know how it feels when the enemy's attacking us, telling us we're not good enough, telling us we'll never make it. What are you doing here? Who do you think you are? Don't open your Bible and read it. It ain't going to do you no good. The battle has already been fought, and we've lost it in our mind. So then when we go to try to worship, we get more defeated because we're not feeling it. When we go to try to pray, we feel like our prayers aren't making it past the roof, so we don't pray. That's the problem. Our mindset is wrong. If I go, hallelujah, if I go into worship knowing that my battle has already been won, Jesus Christ has defeated the enemy, he has conquered the grave, and I am fighting. I am worshiping from a place of victory. I am praying from a place of victory. I am discipling. I am evangelizing. I am doing these things from a place of victory. Amen. Though the hard times might come, the anointing will be released upon you, and you can push through anyways, get through it anyways and overcome the enemy that is in your mind praise God the reason David played music and sang his songs was because he understood the anointing was released through worship he also knew that the anointing would not come upon the people who do not worship he knew that the anointing would not come upon the people who do not worship as worship goes out anointing flows in. It is so critical, so critical that you worship God. You don't have to be in front of anybody. You don't have to be around anybody. You don't really even have to have music. You can worship God anytime and anywhere. Amen. I have learned that in my life. If I will just worship Him anyways. If I will just worship Him regardless. I mean, there is breakthrough. There is freedom in worship. Going to Winterfest, when I, when, when I first started coming here, and I was young, I'm old now, but when I was young, um, when, I was, when I was young and my back didn't hurt, <laughs> but we would go to Winterfest, and Eddie James or Shabak, we would go to Shabak, and Eddie James were at these things, and he'd sing songs, free, y'all know, I ain't going to sing, freedom, free, you know, all the things. Uh, how, 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 I want to shout a little louder than I have before, you know, and then you do the spin, you do the dance, all the things, but Eddie James' music always got to me, because he taught me that no matter what, I can worship God, I'm just going to shout a little louder than before, praise a little louder than before, I mean, I'm going to shake it off, and I'm going to keep on pressing toward Christ, another thing I have learned, that if I can just put in my image, Jesus Christ, if I can just get in my mind, the King of Kings, if I can get on my mind, Alpha and Omega, and just set my mind on Him and worship Him and pay nothing attention to anything else, amen. There's breakthrough in that. There's freedom in that. No matter what it looks like, how you feel, or what you think, worship the Lord. 
worship the Lord. He's always working on our behalf. He goes before us. I mean, He's in our yesterday, He's in our today, and He is in our tomorrow. He's in our next month, He's in our next year, He's in our next decade, right? God is going before each and every single one of us. He knows what's best. So when something don't work out or something's not going your way, trust in Him. He's got something better. The anointing is for action. David was a man of war, or for war. He had the anointing for the battles he would face. The anointing is not to thrill. (laughs) Hear me, Pentecostal people. The anointing is not to thrill or to excite you. We are not waiting on emotion. It is not how long you pray. It is how soon you believe in doing what God says to do. Right? Are you lifting up prayers with faith? Are you praying to God in faith? Amen. Are you going to God no matter what the emotion? Are you going to God knowing that the battle is already won? God says in James 5, Are there any sick? Then anoint them and pray for them. I will do the work. Your hand cannot heal them. Your emotions, your screaming cannot do it. It is the name that does it. It is the mighty name of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus, amen, that break chains, amen. It is the blood of Jesus that cast out demons. It is the blood of Jesus that heals. I can't, y'all have heard pastors say it before, we can't heal a gnat with a bad cold, praise God, but through God, through the anointing, amen, God can use us and enable us, amen, to touch the lost, for them to be healed, to see the lost one saved. If God says you're anointed, you're anointed. Amen. It don't matter what anybody else says. It don't matter what you go through. He placed an anointing on your life. Use it. Know you're anointed. Walk in it. Believe in it. Trust in it. Amen. Have faith and step out. You'll never know what God can do in your life if you never have the faith to step out. So when I faith step out and trust in God and he puts that anointing on my life. Amen. My goodness. My faith is built. My trust is built. I can rely on Him a little bit more. See, because if we are who we say we are, if we're an anointed people, if we're an anointed church, then we have to be an active church. We cannot harbor up all the anointing and keep it in here because our anointing will eventually go bad because we'll try to rely on the same old anointing that's in these four walls Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday to Wednesday. But unless we're pouring the anointing out outside of these four walls, then there can't be a constant flow of new anointing flowing through here. Right? We got to be an active church. If we're an anointed church, we got to be an active church. That means we got to step outside of our box, step outside of our comfort zone, step out on faith sometimes. Amen. God's anointing will never run dry. Never has, never will. I mean, his anointing is enough for each and every single one of us to walk in it. It's enough for the whole world to walk in it. We got to be an active church. God blesses an active church. God blesses an active people. Amen. If he gifts us with something, he expects us to use it. Not store it up for our glory, but to use it for his glory. Amen. Number four, the anointing manifests through our words. It manifests through our words. Do you know that two people can stand together and say the same thing? Yet if one is not anointed, it is just words. Someone who is anointed could say the same exact words and all of heaven breaks loose. How many of you can tell? How many of you can tell when you're listening to somebody who's anointed and when you're not? You can tell, right? When somebody's anointed, their words have depth, they have meaning. Amen. It's making a difference. You can tell who's a fake and who's not. You can tell, if you can't, hopefully you can. See, too many of us can't. But you should be able to tell when you're staring at a wolf in sheep's clothing. The anointing will help you do that. The anointing will help you do that. Who cares how good of a show they put on? If we have discernment, we should be able to see that. 
Jesus said in Luke that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The Spirit of of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Our words carry meaning. They matter. Our words carry weight. How we talk, how we speak carries weight. Have you ever <laughs> have you ever asked a have you ever asked a, 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 a Christian? Have you ever asked somebody how they're doing? Oh me. And even though even though they, you know, just got done running the aisle, shouting, hooping, and hollering, having a great big old time. You ask them how they're doing, and it's like, uh-huh, okay. You have anything good to say? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry. That is terrible. I, you know, I, my wife is calling. You know what? I got to go. And you walk away from that person and you're defeated, you're depressed, you're beat down. How? How does that happen? Why does that happen? Well, for one, some people just like attention, right? Some people just like attention, and some people don't have their words, don't have their minds, don't have their hearts under the blood. And I'm not saying you can never complain. Lord knows I complain to Ashlyn all the time. I'm not saying that. But my goodness, have some joy in your life. If you're anointed, if you're appointed, if you're called, if you've been blood-bought, washed, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, set free, walking away from your past, have some joy, have some happiness in your life. When somebody asks you how you're doing, don't give them the spiel. Tell them how good God's been to you. My goodness, if we were... if we. If somebody, we all know a lot more unsaved people than we know saved people, do we not? And I'm sure those unsaved people will ask you every now and again how you're doing, right? There's your perfect opportunity. God has just opened the door. Man, let me tell you how good I am. You ain't got to beat them over the head with a Bible. You ain't got to give them ten scriptures. But that opens a door for you to just, man, let me tell you what kind of joy I have. I am so happy. I am so joyful. God has been too good to me. And from there, the opportunity is endless. God will anoint words of positivity before he anoints words of negativity. Amen. Talk like you're anointed. Walk like you're anointed. Act like you're anointed. The anointing makes you stand out. Jesus is the head. And we are, be, we are to be submitted to Him. We are the body of Christ. The anointing that is on the head flows down to the body. There should be an anointing on you that people can't help but to notice when you walk into the room. When you walk into the room, people should see that light. We talked about it Sunday. People should see the glow on your face. Oh, Brother Dale, he spent time in his prayer closet today. He has prayed today. He has been seeking God today. Palmer is on fire because, my goodness, look at the man. He's walking different. He's talking different. And he's handsome. Like brother, like David in the Bible. But people are supposed to be able to tell a difference when we walk into the room. Are we the church or are we not? You know, back then, we've talked about it before, back then we could tell who was the church and who was not. Simply by the way that they dressed. And even though we don't see that now, my goodness, those people. There was something in them that the church is missing today. They were devoted to God. See, even though I believe it is so much deeper than what we wear, I don't think what we wear is all that important. But I believe that when we are submitted unto God, we are willing to go to any length to follow Him and to be under His will. So even if they felt like that that was their conviction to dress how they dress, that was their conviction and that brought them closer to the Father. See, the problem is now we don't have any convictions. 
We don't know where we stand. Everything is free game, right? We can act and do and say whatever we want to do and expect God to continue to bless us. Expect us to, people to know that we're anointed. Expect people to know that we are the church. But how can people know that when we don't look any different than anybody else? We don't act any different than anybody else. How can we expect to be the church in a world that we fit in with? We got to look different. We got to be different. Acts 4 and 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. You know what that tells me? It don't matter who you are. It don't matter what you look like. When God puts an anointing on your life, when God calls you out of darkness, when God sets your feet on the rock, it don't matter what you look like, what you sound like, you can be a vessel for God to use to reach the lost, amen, to go out and make a difference. You can be what God has called you to be. They thought that they, they thought that they were uneducated and untrained men, but with the anointed, they marveled. They could tell that they were men of God. Where are the men and women of God that when they walk out into the Walmart, when they walk out into the park, when they go out into the job, amen, people can tell that they are men and women of God. The boldness. It was the boldness that set them apart. When you are anointed, amen, you will talk different, act different, and look different. Peter and John had unshakable confidence in speaking the truth, despite the undoubtedly intimidated, intimidating circumstances. I'll talk about that for a second. Right is becoming wrong, and wrong is becoming right. We're seeing it every single day. We've got Pride Month. (laughs) We've got Target doing what they're doing with the clothes. And we've got, I told Willie, I told Willie, I think I'm going to go sell my Ford. I think I'm going to go sell my Ford and go get a Dodge. Um, Because Ford has released, Ford, 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 not a Chevrolet, a Dodge. Ford put out um, a commercial and, 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 and in support of, all that stuff, and that's not surprising. We know that's going to happen. We know the world's not going to get any better pretty soon. Amen. Well, no, not even pretty soon. We've got uh, pastors that, you know, support that stuff now and churches that support that stuff and denominations that support that stuff. So why would I expect any less out of a truck company? Uh, But we have all of this stuff, all of this confusion and all of this ignorance and they're trying to kill the church. And they're trying to snuff the church out. And you can't say anything or you're uh, a, 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 a racist, bigot, homophobe, all of the above. And I do not like being political, but I feel like I need to talk about this for a second. Because the church has lost their voice. <laughs> and the church is not here, church is not here to save the world. The church is not here to save the world. The, church, the earth, the world is going to pass away. But while we're here, we are to make a difference. We are to seek the lost, see people set free, and make disciples. We not may be able to save them all, but we can sure do a lot better than what we're doing. And what, where I'm going with this is it's going to take a voice. See, this country is only as spiritually healthy as the pulpit is. When we have weak pulpits, we have weak people. And I just believe that, again, I know we're going to see a mighty outpouring, but why can we not get our voice back? Why can we not start standing up for what we believe in and what's right? I mean, while we still have the chance. You know, I just believe that we have way too many people, we have way too many people that won't even, I'm not even talking about church people. I'm talking about morals. <laughs> morals don't have to just be coming from church people, right? There's atheists with good morals. There's people who don't believe in anything. There's people that are anti-God with good morals, no doubt about it. 
But I just believe that we need to have a voice. We need to be bold and we need to be confident. Confident in speaking the truth. It's intimidating. It's scary, right? It's scary. But my goodness, I the only thing I believe in affirming is this Bible right here. And I'm not going to affirm you. I'm not going to do it. You're confused. You got a demon attached to you. And you need to get set free from that thing. I'm not affirming nothing. You are, oh, I just feel like going here for a second because it's Pride Month. If you're born a boy, and I know I'm beating a dead horse, but if you're born a boy, you're a boy. If you're born a girl, you're a girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's revelation, ain't it? I'm not going to affirm your sex change just because of the way you feel. In fact, I'm going to stand up and tell you the truth in love and in peace. I am going to stand up for what I believe in, right? There is a way that we can do this church and be effective. We've got to check our methods, amen. Are we sharing the grace through love? Or are we automatically condemning them to hell before we even give them a, give them a chance? You know what I have found? I have, I have found... I have found that homosexual people, I have found that alcoholics, drug addicts, I have found that those people are some of the nicest, sweetest people on this earth. In fact, if we were as kind as they were, our pews might be a little bit fuller. So I know it don't take much to strike up a conversation with them. We don't have to automatically go on a fence, right? We just got to be the church. We got to love them. Jesus sat with the sinners. He didn't sin with them, right? So that tells me that the anointing has given me power to go out into these places and be a light in a dark. John 1 and 5. John 1 and 5. If you got your Bibles, go to John 1 and 5. John 1 and 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Folks, that means that we can go out and be a light in the darkness, amen. Nobody will understand it. Nobody will get, can get it, amen. But that's when we will make a difference. I don't have to affirm anything but what I believe in. And by standing up for what I believe in and knowing that it is the grace and the power and the anointing of God working through me, amen, my goodness, we might be able to see some homosexuals saved. We might see some drug addicts later them down at the altar. Willie Bird, praise God, that, oh, that, that, anyways, anyways, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about, it is still possible for people, God is still a God that delivers people from those things, amen, God is still active, and if he's done it for that person, he can do it for your family member. He can do it for your son, for your daughter, for your mother or your dad. Amen. All it took was a little bit of love. We've become a church with closed doors instead of open arms. We've lost the touch. We've lost the touch. But in that, in that, we've got to know what we believe in. Just like being in alignment with it, we can't talk about it if we don't know what it says. We can't be in alignment with it if we don't know what it is. Right. Spending time with Jesus makes you effective. It makes you effective in the small things. It makes you effective in the big things. Acts 4 and 14, And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it the religious leaders the doubters the unbelievers saw this man standing for the first time in his life and could not deny the miracles that took place because the power of God I see when the power of God is in operation and people start to see outsiders start to see the lame healed the sick healed people delivered set free Amen. They can't deny that. That don't just happen. Right? But through the power of Jesus Christ, amen, it is possible. With Him, all things are are possible. We have to be real careful, church. We have to be real careful of writing people off. 
That is such a, that you if you do not have enough power, you do not have enough authority to write somebody off. I want people around us. I want people that see this church to be in disbelief when they see God moving. I want them left with nothing to say but God. But God. But the anointing. But His presence. Nothing but God. You know what that was? That was some people who were in alignment with God, who were loyal to the Lord. And God moved. God blessed them. That's what it's going to take. His presence is powerful in every circumstance and in every situation in your life. His presence is powerful not just in discipling to people. His presence is powerful in your day-to-day life, in your day-to-day walk with Christ, every step you take, every move you make, every prayer you pray. His presence is powerful and it is needed. It is needed. I need it. I need it in my relationships. I need it in my home. I need it in my family. I need it in my finances. I need it in my career. I need it in my calling. I need the anointing over me from head to toe. Over everything I have. Over every place I step. I need. We need the anointing. And I'm almost done. I'm almost done. If you are in the business world, if you are a preacher, if you're a minister, whatever you are, God can put favor on you. See, we think favor is just for church people. No. Or or, or favor is just for ministers. No. Favor is for children of God. And you know what? You know, favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. So when somebody looks at you and asks you how you got where you got or what you have, how do you have what you have, man, I'm just in alignment with God. I just believe in the Lord, and He's been faithful to me, and I'm faithful to Him. I give Him my first fruits. He is my everything, and He has been faithful to me. He has been too good to me. You want to know how I got where I got? God, you want to know how I have what I have? Good Lord Almighty. Him and nothing but Him. It is the favor of God that can make you stand out. It is the favor of God that can give you the boldness. It is the favor of God that can put an anointing on your life. Amen. That is so strong. See, all of us are called. You don't have to receive a word from a preacher or God talk to you in an audible voice. To know that you are called. All of us are called. If you weren't, if you did not have a purpose, you would not be here today. The odds of us being here are so slim, but yet God chose you. God put you in this place. My goodness, and if God hadn't anointed you already, He wants to. Because for such a time as this, He needs Granny. He needs Harry. He needs Janice. He needs all of us in here. He needs us. Young and old, whether we've been in this thing for 40 years, 50 years, 5 years, no years. We are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose. I mean, and I just don't want to live, I just don't want to live that every day, get by, going on nothing, weak, broken, pathetic life. I want to be empowered. I want to have strength. I want to have knowledge. I want all the things of God because when God made himself available, when God sent his, his son to the cross to die for me, it was the full thing. He just didn't send a little bit. It wasn't partial. It was the full thing. And we are fools to not walk in the fullness of God. We are fools to not take advantage of the blessings that he has so graciously given us. It is by His grace. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. We can't deserve it. It is by His grace. And that should be enough. That should be enough courage. That should give you enough courage to chase after it, to go after those things, to know that as long as I'm in alignment with God, as long as I am faithful to Him, amen, as long as I trust in Him, amen, that is made available to me. 
You don't have to have the right last name. You don't have to be in the right family. You don't have to have, you don't have to have education. You don't even have to speak right. My goodness, but with God, He's made it available to all of us, for, to all of us for the taking. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again, church. We have got to be good stewards of the anointing. We have got to handle the anointing properly. God gave it to us so that we can use it, and He's given us the outline for how to use it. So we've got to walk in that. The anointing is not for your name and lights. The anointing is not for views on the internet. The anointing is not for popularity. The anointing is not for getting your name somewhere. The anointing is to help others, to be a disciple to other people, to make a difference in this world. And unless we carry it graciously and carefully, amen, we're losing it. We're, 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 we're losing it. Churches are, are shutting down. Saints of God are going home and nobody is filling their shoes. We don't have anybody stepping up to the plate. Somewhere we've lost the anointing. Amen. I want you all to stand. Amen. Amen. And just, you begin to pray. You, you just begin to pray. You begin to seek God. Seek His face. Amen. If you need to come to the altar, come to the altar. If you need to get down on your knees and pray and seek God's face, do it. If you have not been a good steward of the anointing, that's okay. It's time to change it though. God has made it available. It's still there. He's still placed that anointing on your life. He has still called you. It's up to you to pick it back up. But this time when we pick it back up, we're going to carry it the proper way. We're going to carry it with grace. We're going to carry it with love. We're going to carry it with submission and humility unto the Father. That's what it takes to carry the anointing. That's what it takes to be a good steward of the anointing. Amen. We, as a church, have hurt ourselves for way too long. It's time to get our voice back. It's time to stand up and be strong again. It's time to know that you know that you know that what God said is true. What God said will come to pass. Amen. So let's be bold. Let's have faith. Let's walk in the anointing. And let's make a difference. Let's be a light that the darkness does not understand. See, the darkness understands us way too well now. I was reading a book. I was reading a book, and I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but I was reading a book, and this woman of God had a vision of a big church. This was a big church, a full church, doing well, doing well. She had a vision, and in that vision, demons in black robes, Demons in black robes walked into the front doors of that church, took a seat on the pews, and turned in to people. Turned into people. And as this woman saw the people continue to walk, it was, it was over a period of time, those demons, they come in with black robes, they sat down, and they turned in to just a, 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 sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. They looked like sheep, but they were wolves. And over time, the woman said that she saw that church diminish and get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally there was nothing but those demons left. And they appeared back in their black robes and they walked back out the doors of that church. That's happening way too much in our churches these days. Our eyes are not spiritual to see wolves walking in to see demons walking in and sitting amongst our people. 
and destroying our churches. So, with that being said, it's over. The time of that is over. We have got to get our courage back, our boldness back. We got to start pleading the blood over some things. We got to start seeking after His face, seeking after the anointing, getting on our knees and praying for each other, praying for one another, standing up for one another. Amen. Because I want to see you. I've got people in my life. I would wait however many more lifetimes it took to see heaven if it meant they got right with God and they got to see heaven too where is that passion where is that desire we have forgotten the mission and when we put the mission back at the forefront amen I believe our hearts and our minds will be in the right place it's time to be a strong church again it's time to be an anointed church and I'll say this it's time to be an anointed church on purpose the anointing is for purpose. Let's figure that out and let's go after it. Praise God. Amen. Lift your hands all over this place. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for what you have done, God, in our lives. We thank you for the calling that you have put on our lives, God. And right now, I pray, Father, for anybody. Everybody that is called in this room, if they have put that down, if they have walked away from it, God, help them to pick it back up. Help them to walk in their calling. But God, let it be different this time, Father. Let them take that calling and let them have the anointing and let them use the anointing, Father, so that they can be strong in their calling, Father. So they can stand up against the tricks and the wiles of the devil, Father. For they can stand up against your attacks, against, Father, everything that might come against them, Father. Help them to fix their eyes on you. Help Help them to trust in you, Father. God, help us to be good stewards of the anointing, Father. I don't want to be a church of no action. I want to be a church of action. I want to be an anointed church, an on-fire church, Father. A church that goes out, God, and sees miracles done in your name. Sees lost loved ones come back in your name. Amen. Sees these things, all these things done. What the church is supposed to be, God, let it be done. Lord, help us to walk in your anointing. Help us to walk in your calling, Father. Help us to seek your presence. We need your presence not just on Sunday, God, but in every day and every aspect of your, our life. God, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for this worship. I thank you for this word. I thank you for all that you've done, God. I thank you for all that you are, Father. God, I pray that you go with us today, Lord. Help us to chase after you. Let us take what we've heard tonight, Father, and use it. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of us, God. Give us strength, Father. Help us to walk into power, Father. Help us to walk in victory, Lord. Help us to always turn back into you, Father, and trust in you, God. Father, give us favor, give us grace, give us mercy. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. We thank you, Father, for who you are, God. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want them to lead us in a worship song real quick. I don't want to leave here without worshiping God one more time. So let's worship God. Let's pour our heart out for just a few more moments, and then we can go home, okay? Jesus Christ, my King, what a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of 